The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Anyway, this week on the Pope on Film podcast, Bunifornia, yeah. today, today, I am a proud man. A proud man indeed. Because yeah. this week, this week, as is as is the case in many weeks on the show, we will be getting a bad, bad, very bad movie and ripping it to shreds. Or as it's called in El as Spanish, El Shreds. And also, I don't know Spanish. El Shredo. We, El Shredo. We have ripped Or El Shredo. Uh, yes. Yeah. Depending on if it's a guy or a girl, we're shredding. Yeah. We have ripped a ton of bad movies on the podcast before. Oogie Loves, yes. The Giant Claw, which was misleading because there was actually a bird attached to that giant claw. Uh, Casablanca. What a piece of crap yeah. that was. Yeah. Uh, APE, Attack of the Giant Horny Gorilla. That was lame. Twilight. <laughs> Why Lidget? Uh, Spinal Tarp. That was a that was a horrible film. All horrible movies that were chosen either by me or by Bunny or by fate, which yeah. is which is how it happens uh, a lot, oftentimes. Um. Ah, but not this time, my friend. Mm-hmm. My unconventional conventionists no this week's movie was chosen by my better and much bustier half natasha my wife yes she said we had to do this movie she said you have to do this and so we're doing it do do they have a heads up are they coming in soon I think they just finished. In fact, let me uh, let me just uh, take the show down the hallway and see for a second. Did you guys finish the movie? It's almost over. Almost over. Right here. Looking at the newspapers. Looking at the newspapers. Okay, gotcha. Ten four. Uh, almost over. It is almost over. Okay. We are almost done with the movie, but. Natasha said that we had to do this movie, and so we're doing it. And let me tell you, on the side, that is already more doing it than I have done this year. I was going to say month, and then I decided to expand it. Yes, put on your flannel shirt, grab some pie, and crank up the classic rock, because this week we are covering... The supernatural adjacent 2010 Canadian made sci fi channel horrible film known horrible. as Stonehenge Apocalypse. Hooray! Oh man. See now, okay. Let me let me get out how I feel about this movie immediately. Yes. Yeah. Okay? Yes. It reminds me of Rock of Ages. Okay? It reminds you of Rock of Ages. Okay, how does it remind you of Rock Hold of Ages? On. One Hold of on, the what? things one of the things that I really loved about Rock of Ages was how it was one gigantic fucking cliche from beginning to end. Okay. Every well, character gotta... was cliched, every detail was cliched, the plot was cliched. Everything was cliched. The music was cliched. And I love that about Rock of Ages. Yeah. This movie reminds me of Rock of Ages because each and every bit, everything, everything that they said from top to bottom, pure fucking gibberish. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of gibberish in this movie. It's like none of you have gone to a science class ever. <laughs> yeah, I don't think a lot of the science holds or up. Or know anything about conspiracies. Yeah. 
Like, what the fuck? Shit, my... Yeah, to be fair, though, I think we can all agree that there's a robot head on the moon. Mm -hmm. I think that we can all agree on. That's the joke you repeat? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It was a robot head. Yes. Stonehenge apocalypse. No one knows who they were. (laughs) That's what I said. That's exactly what I said to Jeannie when I was watching this movie. And I saw that motherfucking fake ass Stonehenge. I wish I had giant warts. Yeah. Stonehenge. Where the demons dwell. Where the banshees live and they do live well. <laughs> Stonehenge. So, um, now there's not a lot of information about this movie because obviously. Yeah. But I'm going to try. It's a 2010 movie. It was made in Canada, as is everything ever made with a cast member of a show on the CW network. Yes. Canada is the CW capital of the world or the other way around. I'm not even sure if that makes sense in retrospecticus, but you understand what I'm going for. Yes, I do. It played on the Sci-Fi Network, where, at least in its first uh, showing, it pulled in some decent ratings for a sci-fi movie that's not shark-related. I mean, we can all agree that Tara Reid is a ratings juggernaut. Yes. Tara Reid is a... Everyone tunes in to the Sharknado movies just to see what Tara Reid is up to. Because she is just an American darling. Really? What you don't understand here is that this movie was so nonsensical. I had to watch it fucking three times. And I still don't think I got what's going on. I am so sorry. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know who's in? You know who's in uh, Sharknado 5, which just recently played on TV? You know who's in that one? Who? Johnny Mundo. Johnny Mundo, yeah? Yeah, he gets his uh, arm bitten off by a shark. (laughs) I really think that we should watch Sharknado 5 for the podcast. And I say that fully aware of the fact that I don't think you've seen Sharknado 1 through 4. Well, I've seen 1. Yeah, but you definitely haven't seen 2 or 3 or 4. But... but, um, I was on YouTube and James Corden has like this eight minute video where he's trying to explain Sharknado five to people. And it's hilarious. <laughs> so funny because he wa- cause he's there on the show and he goes, last night I stayed up late because I was watching Sharknado five. Was anybody, was any, did anybody here watch Sharknado five? And no one says anything. And he goes, you're all liars. <laughs> saw it i mean come on none of you watch sharknado but oh my god hearing him try and explain sharknado 5 to his audience is freaking hilarious and he goes no i haven't seen sharknado one through four so i had a hard time with sharknado 5 but the way that he described it was just so funny that i'm like oh we should watch sharknado 5 just apropos of none of the other films (laughs) To try and just watch Sharknado 5 and make sense of it. Yeah. But when Stonehenge Apocalypse first played on the Sci Fi Network, it got a 2.1 rating. That's more than SmackDown. Yeah. Just to be clear, SmackDown does worse in the ratings than Stonehenge Apocalypse did when it first showed. So now, which one is Misha McCall it? Uh, he's the, 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 the. Alex Jones? Brilliant scientist, ter- yeah, turned radio conspiracy theorist. Yeah, yeah. So really, yes. Uh, let's get let's get to the uh, to the um, pansexual elephant in the room. Yes. The story, the star of the film, and really the only reason why anyone would watch this piece of crap. The star of the film is obviously, obviously. Sean Madison as Sergeant Number Two. Yes. Oh my God, how amazing was Sergeant Number Two in this film? And I could have. Sw- 
I could have sworn I heard Larry Linville died. Because at first I'm like, oh man, Sergeant Number One, he really is the star of this movie. Oh, but then Sean Madison as Sergeant Number Two showed up, and I'm like, damn, son. <laughs> film. Man, suddenly I'm a Sean Madison minion. Yes. Okay. The that star one, of the film is that one military dude, the one who looked military. Looked so much to me like Frank Burns from MASH uh, uh, that I was having a hard time not laughing at anything he was saying. <laughs> so the star of the film is Misha Collins, an actor you either don't know or obsess the fuck over. Yes. There are only two poles. You either have no idea who he is or he, he in encompasses every aspect of your entire life. His and, I, and I got and I got to admit, I rubbed it a little, you know, just just a little. Of course, yeah, because that's that's how that's how hot he is. <laughs> His real name is Dmitri Tippins Popanov Krushnik, and those are, <laughs> four names. those are four names. Only one of them is fake. Okay. All the other th- the other three names are his actual name. Just to be clear, the one that I made up is Popinoff. Popinoff. I, I I was going for Popin Fresh. Yeah, yeah. So his real name is Dmitri Tippins Krushnik. This guy, crazy life, odd life, crazy ass life. He graduated with honors from the University of Chicago. He, he, and uh. Collins has some really hard hands. So in my mind, only right using the Chicago Manual of Style. <laughs> 16th edition, obviously. And I just want to quickly remind everybody that Anton Yelchin ran over himself with a car. <laughs> he, killed, he killed himself with his own car. Accidentally. That's amazing. That is an amazing story. Just because you brought up strange names, and I, I, I for some reason I flashed that if you had to call in to work sick and you suddenly yelchened, you would not oh. have a problem. Yeah. yeah. It would be fine. Take the day, rest, a lot of liquids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, unless, God. unless uh, Greg was the manager, because then Greg would be like, "Oh, so you killed yourself with a car? So you're gonna be better, right? Can you come in at two? Can you come in at two then?" And you're like, "I just died, but I gotta go back to work." <laughs> like, like yeah, he, he Gregged me. You gotta go back. <laughs> How he does it? He's a cop now. So Misha's. Well, he didn't. Thing. He did not old Greg you. No, he did not old Greg me. So now take take the beer. Huh? I'm good. Take have a drink, babe. Greg you? routine. I'm gonna hurt you. And turn it into an old Greg routine. Yeah. I think it would work. I'm old Greg. <laughs> you coming into work later? <laughs> Why don't you come in at two? <laughs> we can have some Bailey. Creamy. <laughs> So Misha, the 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 Misha heads, the Misha heads, they only write using the Chicago Manual of Style. Fuck AP style. <laughs> Real Misha minions, yeah, only write using the Chicago Manual of Style. I want to talk about my favorite the Supernatural episode. Basically, my favorite episodes of any TV show are meta episodes. Okay. Where they break the fourth wall and shit like that. Those are always my favorite episodes of TV shows. So one of my, so it, my two, my three favorite episodes of Supernatural. Number one, where they go to a Supernatural convention. Yes. The guys from Supernatural go to a Supernatural convention. Just want to, just want to. After they go into a comic book store and somebody explains 
that explains to them that they're role playing. Yeah, someone's someone they're someone larping. Sees, yeah, they come in to ask a guy a question. And they go, "Oh, you guys are larping." Just big fans of Supernatural, right? Of what? You those uh those uh two guys, right? Uh, Smith and uh, Sa- uh what are this Sam and Dean? Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Bad cheap suits, badly made FBI badges. You're LARPing, right? Yeah, unbeknownst to Sam and Dean, there's a writer out there that has been for a long ass time writing the adventures of Sam and Dean. And the books that he's been writing are 100% the adventures that they have on the show. So they end up going to a supernatural convention where everyone's dressed like them and talking about their adventures and stuff. They see people from like past episodes, the Scarecrow, yeah, um, the Hookman, stuff like that. Yeah, that's one of my favorite episodes. The other one, the uh, one of my other favorite episodes, is when they are going. Uh, they are uh, transported. No, no, uh, investigating okay. these murders that are happening at a high school. Oh, that, that's the that's the hundredth episode. That's the hundredth episode. Okay, and so the, the high school, the two hundred, like the five thousand. I think it's 5, like the two hundredth episode. episode. Yeah, it's a musical. So the high school is producing a musical with all the school kids based on the supernatural books. So it's a supernatural musical episode. Yeah, okay. supernatural the musical. Yeah, supernatural the and musical. And they do an amazing. Uh, a uh, rendition of Carry On My Wayward Son, and it's wonderful. It is really beautiful. And then my... Where I, Where is a good episode to jump into Supernatural? Because I cannot deal with four, season ep- one. Season four, episode one. Season yes, four, episode one. Me. I might try it there. Well, that's when Cass appears. Okay. You really just, just jumped immediately to that answer. How oh, quick. You were able to answer that question. Well, yeah, because that's the first episode Misha Collins is in. Duh. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> so my my third favorite episode is probably one of my... That's probably a bad place to start, though, honestly, because you don't get a lot of backstory, and you're like, wait, Dean's back from the dead? What? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, that's probably a bad place. I could ask my meta group the best place to jump in. <laughs> Okay. But probably somewhere around season two or three, because the thing is, the, the season finale, they start dying pretty early in the series, okay? Yeah. Season two's finale is Sam dying, yeah, and then Dean selling his soul to uh, bring his brother back, and yeah. then they end up season three, Dean ends up dying because he sold his soul for a year to live so that Sam could come back, and then the beginning of season four is Dean coming back, and that's the episode with Cass. Well, so, I've seen like, Buffy die, so, you know, I, I well, can I relate. Much, I pretty much gave you enough backstory to yeah. understand it, so you could start there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Dean's dead. He's back from the grave. Voila. Because he saved Sam from death. Yeah. Yeah. Made a demon deal. So, but one of my- so now we got to get back to this steaming pile of shit. <laughs> no, 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 because I'm we're not still, done yet. I'm still talking about my three favorite episodes of Supernatural. Okay. My my, my absolute all-time favorite episode, and this is a callback to uh, our Blazing Saddles episode, but my favorite episode is called The French Mistake. Yeah. And it's an episode where they are... They're, uh, an angel throws them into an alternate reality where they are Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles playing... Sam and Dean Winchester on a television show. Okay. So they, so yeah, so they play Sam and Dean who are put into the bodies of the actors who play no, Sam and Dean. No, they're not even put into the bodies. They are, they are, they are Sam and Dean. They're put in, I don't know what happens, never explains what happens to uh, Jensen and Jared from that alternate reality, but they are, have become them i guess i don't know because it never explains that you yeah. would assume there would be another jensen and jared running around yeah. yeah but it never yeah so so they are they become jensen and jared and they even throw in like the whole fact because like uh the person that jared Padalecki's married to is yeah. genevieve and genevieve played ruby on the show so when they first come in like she's on the show and jensen's like 
Ruby? And she's like, ha ha, Jensen. Very funny. Yeah, that got old quick. And like Jared Padalecki is married to her because he's married yeah. to her in real life. Uh huh. And there's no, there's no Castiel, but Misha Collins is there. Yeah. Yeah. And Misha, we play, he plays Meta Misha. Okay. Meta Misha. Yeah, yeah, I really, I and really, he also yeah. Gets killed. Yeah, I really like Misha Collins right. in The French Mistake because he's playing. I'm sorry himself the real life know. misha collins and he's misha. always on instagram and twitter like in the episode always on social media. yeah he's oh, always yeah. on social I media talking to his fans yeah it's really cute because it, misha collins is playing misha collins and so he's always on social media going oh <laughs> hey my misha migos i'm so i'm eating a banana well i'm wondering if they've they've ever done the opposite of that episode where the actors are thrown into a supernatural story. Cause that would be kind of interesting. Like, well, why the fuck is an angel hitting on me? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, uh, Misha Collins, Misha Collins has. Oh, oh, so we were talking about life. He graduated with honors from the university of Chicago. He was an intern in the white house during the Clinton era. <laughs> he was a professional carpenter in the mountains of New England. He made basically all of the furniture in his house. He's a published poet in a number of reputable literary journals. He builds schools and orphanages through his nonprofit known as Random Acts. Yeah. And and here's the best part, all signs point to he's kinky as shit. <laughs> Literally, his wife wrote a book on threesomes. Yeah. And she has uh, said before that her husband helped with the research of the book. (laughs) So not only is he kind and funny and had an amazing life and he's a talented actor, but also he's kinky as hell. Yeah, so so basically. So we can so, assume that at some point he may have had a G.I. Joe up his ass. Yeah. Uh, basically, Natasha has a shot. Okay. Natasha has a shot with the star of Stonehenge Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> but Primarily. Going, but going back to the Clinton era, then that, yes. then that yeah. tells me that he either fucked Monica or he turned Monica down. Yes. Yes. The yeah, those those are both good theories. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, he definitely knew her. I didn't even think about that. Someone should ask him about that. Primarily, I mean, course. he could he could come out and and maybe legitimately say, "Yeah, Bill got my sloppy seconds." Yeah. Yeah. You know? Nice. I they they might have they might have banged the same woman. Yes. Nice. Primarily, of course, Misha. But Collins it works the other way too. If he turned down the one that the president was sleeping with, yeah, like, then you, he. You you go, you Bill. You go ahead. Not my type at all. Yeah. <laughs> I I. I have more class than the president of the United States of America. Yeah. yeah. Which, thank God, now all of America can say. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Huh? exactly. <clears throat> Primarily, of course, uh, Misha Collins is known for his biggest role, his most iconic role, the role that everyone knows him as. Yeah. As Vlad in one episode of CSI. Okay. So he's in Supernatural, which is about to start its 48th season. Because it's it's been on the air since forever. So that's yeah. that's exciting. Um he plays Castiel uh, or Cass, and he's an angel who may or may not uh, want to bang one of the other characters? It's pretty ridiculous how yes. 
how they how they play it. Um, but specifically, I want to talk about his voice. And uh, when talking about his voice, I, I've got to talk about Macho Man Randy Savage. Okay. Because I feel so bad for Macho Man Randy Savage because he's like he's like 24. He's like 29, right? He's like yeah. a 29 year old guy, and he goes, "Yeah, yeah. hi, my name is uh, Rand Randall Savage. Yes, this is my normal voice. This is how I talk regularly. Oh, yes, part. I, I'm I'm also a part time professional wrestler. Yeah, I have a totally different voice when I'm a professional wrestler, but that's okay because I probably won't be wrestling for that long. Yeah." I mean, I'm 29 years old. I have the, my life is an open book. Who knows what I'll be? I might be an actor. I might be a politician. I definitely won't be wrestling for the rest of my life. <laughs> so, so poor Randy Savage. He's like, you know, like 59 years old, going to McDonald's. Hi, could I get a number four? <laughs> What's wrong with your voice? I didn't think I'd be wrestling this long. <laughs> I probably should have had a different voice when I was in the ring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> basically, basically, that's Misha Collins because they sign up Misha Collins and he's like, He's like, so you're going to be playing this angel, this mysterious angel. He might be good. He might be bad. It's unclear. And he goes, oh, OK. So if I'm going to be this mysterious angel guy, I'm going to have a deep voice like this. Yeah, this is my Castiel voice. How many episodes am I going to be in? Only five. Great. This will be my voice then. This is how I will sound on my five episodes of Supernatural. <laughs> cut, cut to like cut to like 10 or 11 seasons later and he's been in like over 110 episodes going god damn it i'm going to start sounding like this now aren't i god damn it <laughs> randy savaged me <laughs> literally he bruised his vocal cords yeah doing this show like he has to do supernatural and then spend time recovering from doing supernatural <laughs> because that's how his voice is yes when he's recording the show and in the beginning he chose that voice just because like okay i'm gonna be doing five episodes that's no problem i'll have uh -huh. this ridiculous voice it's like if christian bale spent like 15 years doing batman movies yeah and so then he gets chosen to, I don't know, be in a remake of Grease. Summer loving. <laughs> and you know, like your voice just stays like that. So poor, poor Misha Collins. He has a bit of that raspy voice in this, too. And it's just a hey, God damn it. He, yeah. he got macho manned. Well, maybe you know? maybe it's maybe it's because even in this, everything had to be so overly important it absolutely did yes everything is the most important thing in the world in this in this uh, in this movie which brings me to the fucking music god okay. I don't even what attention to the music. i don't even think i paid attention to the music at all so i'm interested to see what you have to say how could and this actually well it, it's always been there but the final piece fell into place last night when I was watching it for the third time. <laughs> Over dramatic music through the whole fucking thing. Like the dude's walking across a field. Okay? It does not need this dramatic music. Okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah you're having a conversation in a hallway all right does not need this dramatic music and then there was something else that was kind of nagging me about it yeah i know that music 
Ooh, yeah. Yes. It is put out by a man named Andrew Kramer of Video Copilot. And it is, it is, I have it. <laughs> okay. And it is really? a bunch of loops and percussion beats and all of that. So you can put dramatic music in your movies. <laughs> nice. like exactly what it's for. It's like yeah. 1999. Oh, that I've, is. A, uh... I've used some of that music for this show from time to time. When you ask me to put in dramatic music for a piece, that's where I go. <laughs> wow, uh, you solved a mystery there. Yeah, I'm like so- that okay. might be a Pope on exclusive. This movie is as cheap as it can get. And we haven't started talking about the effects yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we haven't even gotten there yet. So, Misha Collins, this man has a rabid following among the supernatural family, or as I like to call them, supernaturites. Supernaturites. Supernaturalians, or just supers. <laughs> this movie. I love this movie. It is fucking insane. Yeah. I love it. It's one of the funniest movies I've seen in a long time. Unfortunately, it's not meant to be funny, but whatever. But like this whole movie is written uh, by somebody who does not understand either topic. And yes, of magic or science and didn't look anything up. Not at all. Didn't look a thing up. At all. The special effects are amazing. I've never seen a film with balls enough to make a movie about Stonehenge and never show the real Stonehenge. Yes. Like, this is a green screen Stonehenge from beginning to end. And I have a friend, uh, Brad, he might be your friend too. I know him through Bruce Nobles, who who just got back from Stonehenge. <clears throat> he had pictures of Stonehenge all over his wall. So so what Stonehenge looks like is really pretty fresh in my mind. Why yeah. does this look like it's made out of plastic? <laughs> yeah. Um I wanted to talk about a Misha Collins Stonehenge apocalypse related scandal. Okay. A scandal. Um, like for real. I, I learned about something that. Did he have um, a fight on a balcony? Um, no, 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 no. Um, he runs this thing every year, Misha Collins. He calls it Gishwas. Okay. G-I-S-H-W-H-E-S. Gishwas. It stands for Greatest International Scavenger Hunt the World Has Ever Seen. Okay. He does it once a year. Is that what Um, Tasha was doing? Yes, that, that was Gishwas. He started it in 2011. Um... Every year, you know, you get different teams and the different teams have to do every year. Misha Collins comes up with this wild list of bizarre things that you have to do for Gishwas. So you come up with a team and the team competes and then the winning team joins Misha Collins and his wife on a vacation somewhere for free. Oh, like one year you go, you go to Rome and one year you go here and. He comes up with really bizarre stuff to like. Uh, we um, we saw. She, yeah, like, that, that explains why she was so manic to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, like uh, in 2014, one of the things was find an object that you're holding on to for all the wrong reasons and destroy it as mightily as you can. That would have gotten you 17 points. Okay. 
sucking blood from a donut would have gotten you 10 points. Create a Rube Goldberg machine that includes Eye of the Tiger, an image of John Travolta, a toilet plunger, and acorns. <laughs> Giving you 91 points in 2014. Yeah, so Gish was, a, a, and they do it for charity too. Like the like uh like they raise all this money, and the money goes to charity. And then like every year they do something different. Like uh, for every person who signs up for Gish was like they'll plant a tree. Like it, it, it's it's like a it's like a a nonprofit sort of a thing. It's you know kindness and silliness and fun and that sort of thing, right? Yeah. Okay, so in at the end of 2012, Misha Collins announced some top secret new project, and he advertised it as, quote, from the mind that brought you Gish was. So people assumed that this was going to be another Gish was type nonprofit sort of a thing. So 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 suddenly he released this mysterious new website and it was christmas will never be the same dot com and it led you on this bizarre mystery scavenger hunt thing and there were clues and riddles and you had to figure out all these things and then finally it, after you did all of these different things there was a reveal yeah. and the reveal the reveal was an event that was going to happen at the end of 2012 they called it a very Stonehenge Christmas. Okay. <clears throat> and the website was StonehengeChristmas.com. They were going to live stream the movie Stonehenge Apocalypse with the two stars doing MST3K ripping of the film. Nice. <clears throat> oh, then, I would like that. And then, like, there were different levels. You could spend money to interact with Misha and you could even spend money to get an autograph Stonehenge apocalypse poster. If you paid $78, you could be in a chat room and also get the poster. And then, uh, you, you know, at the cheapest level, you could watch the whole thing and yada, yada, yada. So then registration was opened. And then two days later, they canceled the registration and they gave all the money back and they canceled the entire event because um, of negative fan reaction. Because negative. all. Yeah, negative fan reaction because Misha Collins was all secretive about it. And he said from the mind that brought you Gish was. So people were expecting an interactive event similar to Gish was. And also all of the money that you spent to take part in a very Stonehenge Christmas went to Misha Collins and not to some freaking charity. This was all just a commercial enterprise, and Misha Collins fans got pissed, and so he canceled the entire thing. Oh. That sucks. I would have loved a very Stonehenge Christmas. Yes. I would have loved the God, shit out Yes. I would have loved hearing who's a dick on set. Yeah, I would have loved watching the two stars of the film make fun of the film. Yeah. 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 Or, the, just, or just be like, yeah, remember that guy? Yeah, what a douchebag. Yeah. The closest thing to that that exists is the audio commentary track for um, uh, Armageddon. Uh, what's his name? Uh, ben Affleck? He hates yeah. that movie. Yeah. It's worth, it, yeah, it's worth buying the DVD of Armageddon to hear Ben Affleck make fun of the movie Armageddon. <laughs> it's a and really he, great and he, audio And he track. really kind of sucked in it. Yeah. It's a really great audio track. There's a there's a part in there where he says, now, you know, I went to the director and I said, hey, wouldn't it make more sense to train astronauts how to drill than it would to train drillers how to be astronauts? And the director <laughs> said, hey, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's going to be a very Stonehenge Christmas. Got yeah. canceled. It's a damn shame. I would have loved watching Misha Collins make fun of Misha Collins' film. Misha Collins, 
uh, talks about Stonehenge Apocalypse a lot on his Twitter feed and on his Instagram and yada yada yada. Yeah. And he's always talking of yeah, he's always talking about how he did this film. It's called Stonehenge Apocalypse, and it's the worst film of all time. And he knows it, and he likes that. Good, you know, I I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate too the fact that he is just really open at like, oh yeah, this movie is horrible. Yes. Yeah. And not so, denying it, you know, and not, not denying it and having fun with it. You know, that's, that's the, that's the Johnny Depp, Kevin Bacon, Razor's Edge. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Johnny Depp will sit down and talk to you about Nightmare on Elm Street. Kevin Bacon will deny it was him. Yes. In Friday yes. the 13th. Yes. Yeah. So let's discuss the plot of Stonehenge Apocalypse. Now, I had a conversation with my wife about the beginning of Stonehenge Apocalypse. She disagrees with me, but that's because she's a dirty liar. Okay. The film starts off with a really Alex Jones type motherfucker uh, talking about strange. And if you take what he says and break it down, he is basically stealing the opening of Plan 9 from Outer Space. Okay. It, Again, had, it, had really hard time tracking a lot of this shit. So, But if you really pay attention to it, Misha Collins is there. You're here because you want to talk about the strange. Yes. You want to get the truth. You want to learn about the unknown. Basically, yeah. he's Criswelling it up. He is Criswelling the beginning of this film. I accidentally took it that you meant the movie as a whole. No. Yes, no, just definitely, the definitely. No, I got to agree. Opening. And the thing that pisses me off is that if you went to like the screenwriter, he'd be a real dick about it. Oh, yes, you noticed that homage. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, very few people notice that. You're very astute. Yes. Uh, we put that homage into Plan 9 from Outer Space, you know, for the hardcore fans. We well, figured they'd appreciate that. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you, guy. That was that was the best line of any filmmaking book that I have ever read. And I forget which book it was. But. There was this one section. This guy had made some small movies and things like that. Um, and the one thing he had said was, so now that people have seen your movie, if anybody comes up and points out a part and says that's genius, just say thank you and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I yeah. was, yes. <laughs> that is so good. That is so good. We're breaking down the plot. I'm talking about how the opening is entirely planned out from outer space. Have you talked about the uncomfortable close-up face shots? Oh no, I I didn't even notice that, Bunny. Did you what? notice the uncomfortable close-up face shots? Say that again. Uh, uh, say it again. The uncomfortable close-up face shots. Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. <laughs> and there's, when, there's whenever... one particular face shot in particular close-up that that I would like to mention later on. Okay. Okay. Uh, what else were you saying? Uh, the main girl in one scene, she has a close-up and she... I guess she thinks that she's looking serious or whatever, but like one of her eyes is really yeah. squinty and it, I don't know. It, just, yeah. <laughs> it really bothered me. Oh, huh. <laughs> huh. yeah. Oh, thank you, Bella. Thank you for fanning me. Bella's a big fan. So you cut to an archeological dig. Yes. And they find something, they're underground. They find a wall of, Markings, yeah, and some, uh, and uh, I don't remember his name, and I I just didn't want to learn his name because this movie is shit. 
Yeah. So some fine ass piece of caramel chocolate. Yes. Gets out a gold statue that is badly CGI'd attracted to the wall like a magnet. And that is why black people tried to start the apocalypse. Yes. Because at the badly CGI'd Stonehenge, there's an earthquake, and then the stone starts to move together, and then there's electricity, and everyone is killed. And this is where Natasha made a wonderful point. You can tell that this movie is science fiction and not science faction. Uh Because uh, when Stonehenge comes together and there's electricity, electrical sparkings and then the electricity wipes out everybody there are some black people at stonehenge and they just stand there yes <laughs> okay are smart enough black people are smart enough that once the ground starts moving they would be like fuck this i am out of here couple of things about stonehenge and the lightning okay yes First, and I had mentioned this to Jeannie, Stonehenge, the Pyramid of Giza, the Sphinx, any place like this, okay? You pull that camera back just a little bit more, and there's a fucking parking lot. (laughs) You never see the parking lot. Yeah. Like, this is not a huge tourist destination that everybody just flocks to. Like, and like, they yes, in. they walked in for 20, 30 miles. Yeah. Right and, and like, yeah. like, even if. Well, what happens if you hear Stonehenge is closed and you're already on your way? You know, yeah. a lot of people are going to be showing up to see Stonehenge that didn't get the message. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So there's the first point about Stonehenge. The second point of Stonehenge is why is lightning coming out of non-conductive rock? Yeah. No, if Stonehenge was closed, then they would just National Lampoon's vacation it. <laughs> they would have like a, like a robotic moose in front of the parking lot. Sorry, <laughs> folks, Stonehenge is closed for two weeks to clean and repair the world's favorite mystical fun park. Sorry. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, now, now wait. Take that moose and replace it with Spinal Tap. Okay. That's it. it. They just sting. Ho- they, they stand there all day just sting- singing Stonehenge over and over again. Stonehenge is closed. There will be no encores. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but, but seriously, once electricity starts, the minorities would be like, fuck you, white folks. I'm running the fuck out of here. Yes. The fact that there are minorities that are going, what? What? What's going on? I better stay still. Like, there are holes in the rocks, people. (laughs) They're fucking running the moment they move. Like, what the hell are you doing? (laughs) Cut to... With with shouts of, fuck this job. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Cut to Dr. Jacob Glasser... Some sort of radio broadcaster. Like, I was so confused because, like, is how is this a radio show? Yeah. Like, is he recording on the internet? If is he a podcaster? Is he a podcaster? He's got recording equipment like he has an actual radio show, and yet he also seems to be doing it from his basement. Yeah. So, and also, he just pauses the show. He's like, I'm going to stop the show for a moment. Uh So he can't be recording on a radio, but he's got, like, fucking reels to reels and shit. Like, he's on the radio. I'm so confused. Like, what the fuck? How is this a show? I'm still betting it's YouTube and all that other stuff is for show. That's a good point. That's a good point. What's up, you tubers? It's yeah. Dr. Jacob Blasser. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he's doing his best Charlie Sheen impression throughout the entire film. That's that's how I saw Misha Collins's Dr. Jacob Glasser. Yeah. I never said it was aliens. I said a robot head on the moon. Duh. Winning. Yeah. <laughs> 
So callers, and call we have. Up. When was this fucking movie made? Two thousand and ten. Yeah, we have such better conspiracy theories now than so anything much. they've used. Yeah, agreed. Ley lines is like thirty years old. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's electromagnetic current. That yeah. means that if ley lines were real, okay, yeah. Bella would have already have made a device out of soup cans, a battery, and a coil of copper wire in school to see the ley lines. Yeah. Like a man, an electrical magnetic force is not hard to detect. Right. You know, but why did this not come up in geology class? Uh, because. Or earth um, science or anything like that. Because of liberal bias and fake news. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so callers call the show and tell. Dr. Jacob Glasser about Stonehenge moving. So Misha is all, I'm pausing the show and quickly leaves forever. Yeah. I like to think, though, that there are still callers on hold. I've been on hold for three and a half weeks, but I really want to talk to him about the robot head on the moon. <laughs> yeah. So Misha is it, apparently. It just say aliens on the moon, because that's a real. On the dark side of the moon. There are aliens. Yeah. That is an actual computer. That is an actual conspiracy theory. Right. Okay. So you're cool because you changed it to robot head? Robot head. Uh, what? Why? I, you know, like, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. So Misha is apparently old BFFs with uh, sexy caramel chocolate. So they're talking on the phone and, and their, their conversation goes like this. Exposition, 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 exposition. So yes. that's their conversation. Yes. Basically, basically, Misha Collins is out to prove that all of these stories about a monster at Lake Marsh are actually true. Yes. And that's the that's that's the that's the the plot of the entire film, basically. Mm -hmm. So then, and, because, and we would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Yeah. So then, uh, because this is a science fiction show, there's all these uh, scientists in the lab, and they're going, uh, "Science, science, 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 science." Oh, I was in Stargate Atlantis. Science, 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 science. <laughs> basically, basically, radio waves are coming from within Stonehenge. So, so Misha shows up there, and and here's the amazing thing: he shows up like a minute later. Yeah, I don't know how he gets from a basement somewhere in America to Stonehenge in like five seconds. Well, apparently, he does his podcast from the basement of the slaughtered lamb. I was thinking that maybe he had a port key, that there was this whole Harry yeah. Potter sort of subplot that was just cut out because this is a main TV movie and they just didn't have time to explore that world. So he... he and, he, and, he appears, and he appears and he's just holding an ancient and really dusty sex toy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Something tells me he does have that in his house made entirely of wood that he's done himself because he's a carpenter. Yes. So Misha shows up like a minute later and he sneaks past armed guards by hopping a fence. Hopping? That's yes. All you have to do. That's all you have to do to avoid guards is hop a small fence. Uh-huh. Hey, there's an intruder. Oh, wait, he hopped that small fence. There's nothing we can do. For an larger. area that's under military lockdown. It's, yeah. It's pretty easy to get past the military lockdown. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. There's some strong electromagnetic currents. And, and like, Subterranean. I, Subterranean <clears throat> current. Subterranean. 
After a magnetic current. They're ley lines. They're ley lines. It, you, it's like fucking 30 years old you had to go back to come up with ley lines. And it's not suddenly cool again because you t- call them subterranean currents. They mention it so much, though. Like, oh, do you see these electromagnetic currents? Where are these electromagnetic currents coming from? Oh, these electromagnetic currents are coming from here. Ooh, let's see if we can find the electromagnetic currents. I kept, um, I kept Princess Brighting it. Like, you keep using yeah. that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. No. If, if ley lines are real, okay, y- you would have heard this line somewhere when somebody would be house hunting, and it would be like, Maybe you don't really want this house. You're going to have tele- terrible television reception. It's right on a ley line. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lightning from stone. Yeah. Speaking of lightning from stones, um, Misha is uh, looking at the electromagnetic currents. Then there's another earthquake. The stones move and bam, roasted scientist. Yes. Meanwhile, at the same time, an Aztec pyramid erupts into a volcano of commercial bricks. But the scientists are all, maybe it's not connected. I don't know. I'm a scientist. (laughs) Meanwhile, Misha still hasn't been captured. And he's all like, ooh, look at these electromagnetic Pulses. Look at all these EMPs. There's so many EMPs and ooh ah. Yeah. So he's so he's finally taken captive. Meanwhile, soil samples from Stonehenge show bacteria that's been around since the beginning of humanity. But the serious scientist is all like, "Fuck that. Let's focus on all these EMPs. Yeah. That's the important thing." Not the fact that we've found bacteria that have been around since the beginning of humanity. No. EMPs. Yes. So they're studying radio, the radio waves, and they find that it's a countdown. 37 hours. Tick tock, tick tock. Mm-hmm. But, Just like Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But a countdown to what? Maybe former genius turned Ask crackpot. Jeff Goldblum. He knew it was attacked. Yeah, That's exactly. what the countdown is. If there's a countdown anywhere, it's to some kind of attack, even if it's a bomb. Yeah. And you will disarm it with one second to spare. One second left. Yes. One second left. Yeah. So, hey, maybe former genius turned crackpot Misha Collins knows why. <laughs> we should go get him so they fetch him. And then the lady head of the scientist believes him, and nobody else does. Oh, he's a crackpot. We can't believe him. Crackpots are never right in movies like this. Yeah. But then the female scientist is like, oh, maybe he's right. Maybe I want to be a love interest with him, but not put any effort into it. But they give his credentials for why he shouldn't be a crackpot. And I'm like, yeah. well, you know, if he's if he's that smart why is he shoveling the bullshit that's being shoveled in this movie yeah and he since won. you bring that girl up okay i will yes. give you i will give you my favorite facebook uh, favorite face close up yes okay this actually made me laugh out loud okay they're driving down the road they're blah, 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 talking about the shit and he's like i know what they're doing terraforming which came right out of the fucking blue okay then we get a close-up of her she rolls her eyes to the side for a moment and then says you're right like like she rolled her eyes so quick that it was quicker than it took me to describe her rolling her eyes Nice. And okay. like, you're right. And like, wow, I'm glad you were able to validate so quickly his load of crap. Yeah. Yeah. No, science is born to argue. Okay. 
no scientist yeah. is just going to give you. I'll go with terraforming. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. This is science. Science isn't an exact science. Yeah. Science isn't. Science isn't a science. Yes. We can just wing it. It's fine. So a uh, bunch of science mumbo jumbo. Uh, there's a uh, currents and ancient sites built on monuments. There's monuments on them, and Stonehenge is one of them. Uh, yada yada yada. They send a helicopter to do helicopter stuff yeah. at Stonehenge, and Stonehenge fires it in an explosion of commercial breaks. Damn it, I'm sorry, I'm angry. I roll my eyes more deciding what I'm going to put on toast than she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then Big American Army Guy shows up, because there's always Big American Army Guy in movies like this. Yeah. So Big American Army Guy arrives to explode Stonehenge, which sends, uh, which sends Misha into a spot of bother. Yes. Un-British guy. Oh, we've Pip, pip, we've got a spot of bother. Yes. Surprise, surprise, the blast doesn't work, and it repels the explosion. How can we eliminate this threat? I have an idea, though, of how they could have easily eliminated Stonehenge. Yeah. Paperhenge. That is correct. Yes. I did yes. not think of Paperhenge. I paper thought hinge. unplug the Christmas lights. Oh, yeah. No, no. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, Se Sexy Caramel has found an ancient hidden temple underground in Maine. Yes. And you, you know that Sexy Caramel is going to lose on account of how evil Maine is. Like, like, uh, like, oh, you found an ancient burial ground. Yeah. Uh, they're all over the place. This is fucking Maine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we have uh, uh, hidden temples, uh, cursed burial grounds. Every other shop is owned by the devil. Welcome to Maine. Yeah, yeah. Why that's have we Maine. never heard the one in Maine before? Yeah, that's just Maine. Stephen King would have brought it up. Yeah. Oh, you found an ancient hidden temple underground in Maine. Yeah, that's just Stephen King having a goof again. Yeah. <laughs> So so the scientists ask Misha Collins for help. And Misha Collins thinks that all of this uh, rigmarole has to do with the MacGuffin mechanism. Yes. The MacGuffin mechanism. An ancient yada 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 made by uh, ancient Gagus. Saint ancient Gagus. Yeah. And uh, it's in a museum in New York. And of course, they don't believe him. Then the countdown goes off again. Yeah. And again, Stonehenge freaks out and more pyramids turn into volcanoes. Wow. Who would have thought the crackpot in a movie was actually right? Yes. So the lady scientist and some other guy sneaks Misha out and takes him to go get the MacGuffin mechanism. Yes. Misha believes that somehow Stonehenge is terraforming the planet. Hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, I'll go with it. Yeah, no problem. Meanwhile, the scientists try and, I don't know, jam the signal or something, whatever, it doesn't work. So Misha that's, arrives that, to get that, the... That's, that's more understandable than the shit they were saying in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Misha arrives, again, five seconds later. It's really quick for... It, nowadays, to get from Stonehenge to New York City. Yeah. That's a 30 second plane ride. So, yes. So, uh, good for Misha. So, Misha arrives to get the MacGuffin, and there's a pointless shootout because I don't know, there hasn't been action for a while. Yes. And, shock of shocks, the perpetrator is Sexy Caramel Guy from the opening. Yes. He apparently has a cult, and they are going to be the only survivors after Stonehenge terraforms the planet. Anywho. They knock out Misha and take the MacGuffin. So the countdown goes off yet again. More craziness. The Pyramid of Giza explodes in a hail of bad CGI. Yes. So Misha and the female scientist head to Maine, and they're instantly killed by an evil clown. The end. Yes. 
That's that's what happens if you're going to go to Maine. You you, you gotta you gotta realize that you run the risk of being killed by an evil clown. The microbes. Yeah. The microbes, man. Yeah. These are it the exact happens. same microbes that we find in volcanoes, and it's under stone. No, it is not. <laughs> it wouldn't be alive. And you are telling me that 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 lightning rock heat and conditions are the same as volcanic conditions? Oh my god, bunny, 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 bunny. Yes. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine sitting and watching this movie with Neil deGrasse Tyson? Oh god, yes. I'm that pretty sure that fun. would kill him. I'm pretty sure that would kill him. It would be fun. It, I think it would be fun. I mean, it's more okay, plausible that all. they found a living penguin under Stonehenge. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine, like, the veins on Neil deGrasse Tyson's head. Like, you wouldn't hear, like, a second of dialogue from the film because he would just be talking nonstop. Yeah. He, yeah. would, he would be having the same reaction as if he just watched Two Girls, One Cup. Yeah. 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 So if you ever want to make Neil deGrasse Tyson go insane, just show him Stonehenge Apocalypse. We figured it out. <laughs> so Sexy Caramel is busy sealing up the pyramid that, that's miles and miles underground which makes it odd that he gets into a gun battle in the woods but whatever this movie sucks yeah so the scientists get ready to nuke stonehenge gee that should work yeah <laughs> meanwhile the science gang gets to the temple and oh what there's no sexy caramel guy he apparently left with the magical macguffin yes. mechanism which so which, in, which looks like like microfiche. Yeah, yeah. A, a microfiche yeah. reel. Yeah. So he's in the woods and there's some words and uh, just straight out of the incredibles. You got me monologuing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they get into a scuffle and bang and uh rest in peace sexual chocolate guy. Yes. So now they've got the MacGuffin, so they're off to Stonehenge. So they've gone from Stonehenge to New York to Maine to Stonehenge in just a couple of minutes. So I, I don't know how they're getting around, but good yeah. for you. But uh, military science guy still wants to drop the nuke, so it becomes a ticking clock. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Okay, people. The news, that's my favorite part. The part that I am marked out about is when uh, the, they're playing a news broadcast and the news broadcast says, it literally looks as if we are coming face to face with a Stonehenge yes. apocalypse. Oh, 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 they said it. Uh-huh. Yay. Uh-huh. Religious leaders are declaring at the end of the world. Yeah. Like I heard so that then, on the remake of Dawn of the Dead, dudes. Come on. Yeah. Freshen so then, up your stuff. So then, here comes the shocking twist ending. Sure, the cult leader is dead, but there was a rat amongst the scientists. And shocker, it turns out that the rat happened to be, I don't know, because I wasn't paying attention because this movie sucks. Yes. And and Natasha's my mind like, just kept drifting away. Yeah, Natasha's like, "Can you believe it? Three times. believe it? That guy was the rat." And I'm like, "I don't even recognize that guy. Like, what? Like, I I don't know who the rat is because like I don't care because this movie sucks. But okay, all right. So anyway, <laughs> the rat is waiting to kill Misha Collins. He kills all the other scientists and waits. And then there's a shootout and a chase and. uh Tense last second fight, robot head. Yeah. And then, and, oh, the part the part that made me scream is when the bad guy says, "I must admit that your tenacity is admirable." No one has ever said that in the middle of a gun <laughs> battle. You fucking piece of shit. 
<laughs> Who the fuck are you, Doctor Doom? Fuck you. <laughs> If you're not Thanos, then fuck off, because no one says that. No skinny Canadian ginger has ever said that in the middle of a fucking gun battle. Yeah. <laughs> I must admit that your tenacity is admirable. Oh, fuck you. You can write this shit, but you can't say this shit. Yes, but but also at the same time, got he's, George Lucas. he's talking to the MacGuffin, and you got the military guy saying shit like, no, we've we've got to launch that nuke. As if that makes any fucking sense. Yeah. <laughs> but at, at the last second, Misha saves the day at the end. Seconds left. The papers say the death toll is too high to count. Yeah. Okay, we'll count. The death toll is six. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, maybe it wasn't too high to count. Anyway, the death toll is six. Um, and at the end of the movie, now the female scientist is now hosting the radio show. You couldn't get stock footage of people running in the streets? No, oh, yeah, no, not at all. They couldn't get that at all. Yeah. There was really no panic. You only saw, like, scientists talking about it but really there was no like look at how the rest of the world is dealing with this no it was a lot of gravelly voices intense looks and dramatic music yeah and that was it yeah, yeah. so that's all i've got <laughs> for, for stonehenge apocalypse it's a shitty movie if you're a, a, a misha migo then you then you should see it but other than that you should probably avoid this at all costs. It's yes. for free on YouTube if you know where to look, and it probably won't be there for that long. Yeah, uh, in, instead of watching this movie, go watch the Supernatural anime. <laughs> you know? Oh, I forgot about the Supernatural anime. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, and at the end of the movie, the female scientist is now hosting the radio show. Bookends, bookends. See, we have bookends on this movie. Caller, oh. you're on the air. Yes, I've been on hold for the last six and a half months. <laughs> I wanted to also say that Stonehenge was moving, but I guess that's done. <laughs> Thanks for keeping me on hold for so long. Worst radio show ever. <laughs> So anyway, uh, next week on the show, yeah. Remember the homework is Flight of the Concords: A Texas Odyssey. It's on YouTube. Yes. Uh, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Legos. We're going to be talking about books, and I have three ideas for next week. Okay. Okay. Three ideas for next week. And I wanted you to pick which one you wanted to do. Number one, uh, Amazon Prime, the first Iron Man movie. Okay. I thought that might be interesting to do because they've done so many fucking Marvel movies that that it would be interesting to go back and see the first one. You know, yeah. to see, to see like young. To see like young Tony Stark and shit. Yeah, it 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 didn't kill me, you know. The first Iron Man, I liked it, but you know, Obadiah Stane was an Obadiah Stane, and you know, I there were just things with it as an Iron Man person that I was not particularly pleased with, while still really kind of enjoying it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh number the number two uh Tom Cruise's The Mummy. What are we doing? Oh, uh, we're talking about next week. Are you done? Yeah. You're done. Yes. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. You didn't come out and I uh, asked my opinion once. You were I like, Oh want... no, you have to be in this podcast, I, Natasha. I didn't want because to... you suggested this film. I would have I didn't really want to... <laughs> So annoyed with me all night. I didn't want to bother you. You were so freaking pissed. 
that I had to do the show. Okay, well, if I'm going to be annoyed that you have to do the show on Supernatural Saturdays, I'd rather you interrupt me for the fucking show than be interrupted by the kids. Oh, uh, well, okay, well, can you help me? I had a hard time explaining Gish was. What about it? it like, it's like... It's the greatest kind of, international scavenger hunt the world has ever I, seen, I, and it was inspired by his college because his college used to hold an, a scavenger hunt, a campus-wide scavenger hunt, every single year. So he got that idea and he ran with it. He used his celebrity to gather all of his fucking crazy ass followers to do these random weird shit. Sometimes they're helpful. Sometimes they're fun. Like we have helped a a paraplegic woman in another country and her family so that she wouldn't kill herself and her family could survive. We just saved a dance studio in Africa this past, uh, what what was it? August. Yeah. Um, The woman is dying of cancer. And so we raised enough funds to keep the dance studio open and fund so many scholarships. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I was wondering about the like charity aspect of Gish was like, well, I mean, like we, how, we donate, how does one that of the, work? One of the items on the list was like, donate items to shelters, donate items to uh, cancer patients, go to a children's hospital and put on a puppet show. For the so kids. this is, so this is why you needed a donkey. This is why I needed a donkey. I, I needed a donkey so I could write ass butt on the donkey's butt. Because like that, that wouldn't have been even even like my fifth guess. Yeah, no, it, it's it's was Some some of them are just random crazy bullshit. Some of them are white trashy things. I mean, <laughs> there's, there's no. With, there were protests that were put on throughout all of the world. I mean, there was random crap i mean i went and painted a donkey's ass and there were people out there who have made uh, these huge hammocks over amazing rivers and yeah i and looked like, up i looked up a couple of them and read some of them over the years on the show but yeah. i was having a hard time explaining like the like the like the non-profit aspect of okay, it okay well yeah. if you pay money to to participate um this was the final year but in years previous just like this year, uh, they've gone to crazy places. Like uh, this year, they're going to Hawaii, or next year, they're going to Hawaii. This past year, they went to Iceland. There was like um, Rome one year. Rome was one year. Yeah, yeah. And you get to go to these. The winning team gets to go to these places, Misha Collins. But the rest of the money goes to the random acts nonprofit that Misha Collins started. And he has several. That's kids. that's that's the place that builds the orphanages and the schools yeah, and stuff. They, they yeah. School okay. Orphanage, and um, that money goes to that and. Uh, they do all kinds of amazing things. And if you want to involve yourself in random acts, you can even apply to have uh, money. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like a grant so that you like, if I were to t- apply for a grant, basically is what it, I wouldn't call it that. That's my words, not theirs. Say I wanted to go out and fund a specific like homeless thing. Like I want to provide blankets for all the homeless this winter in Shawnee. I yeah. could email them and say, "Hey, I'm requesting money. I want a, uh, assistance for this. Can you help me out?" And they would review it. They would approve it. They would send me money. I could buy blankets and I could pass them out to the homeless. Yes. I mean, all this good in the world. So Misha Collins, he takes all this crazy and he channels it into good. Yes. Yeah. Does that? I mean, no, that makes sense. Misha Collins has a crazy massive amount of loyal fans and he uses those loyal fans to spread some good around the world there are several conventions like you go to a supernatural convention several of them they have uh random acts booths set up or gishwa's booths set up where he's like hey you guys if you're coming to the convention or even if you're not you can fill a backpack with supplies for like uh which i can't remember which convention it was but he said fill a backpack with supplies these are suggested supplies like um feminine products hygiene products thermal blankets or whatever they're called i can't remember the exact name but the blankets yeah um canned goods toiletries hygiene supplies water snacks and things like that put them in a backpack drop it off this location so not like so not like a cross and garlic and wolf's bane and holy water. No, and- no not supernatural items like that. Okay. No, but like actual items. And then because they passed them and the Misha went and passed them out to the homeless. Yeah. 
I, I personally think if you really want to help homeless people out, give them cardboard and Sharpies. Yes. For instance, remember how I was saying how my cast of Supernatural, they they raised all that money for yeah. Hurricane Harvey? Well, Jensen Ackles, he's opening up, it hasn't opened yet, but he's opening a beer company called uh, Family Business Brewing Company, which is a play on the family business, you know, uh, what is it? Hunting things, saving people, the family business yeah. for Supernatural. Yes. Okay, so he's opening, uh, well. Misha, I was thinking Godfather, but yeah. Misha has random acts, so obviously Misha teamed up with him, and that's that's how they ended up raising all that money. And then they got uh-huh. Supernatural family into it. They got CW into it. I mean, they've got a bunch of people that are sponsoring this, and they're also going to be helping Florida with all yeah. of their hurricane-related needs because, you know, America's getting hit from both sides. Hurricanes, fires. Yeah. The president. He's really bringing nature down on us. So, but yeah, no, they do a lot of good. The Gish was the random acts, all that. They do yeah. amazing work. Nicaragua is where the, the most recent school was built. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I was having a hard time explaining like the nonprofit aspect of Oh, I'm Gish sure was... I did shit job explaining it. No, but... no, no, you did better than me. That's that's the important part. Now, Bunny, I also there was also something I wanted to mention, but I didn't bring it up. Because Natasha wasn't here. Now that Natasha's here, I want to bring this up. Okay. Uh, this is the last year that they're doing Gishwas. Oh. Also. Yeah, we're done with Gishwas. Superna- yeah, they won't be doing uh, Gishwas anymore. Also, Supernatural is about to start its 13th season. Wow. Now, speaking, not from a fan point of view, like attaching yourself from Natasha and detaching yourself from Natasha and just thinking in the minds of like a TV fan. Yeah. Wouldn't it make sense to end your supernatural show on the 13th season? Yeah. Yeah, actually. And, and, And. wouldn't it almost seem like a confirmation of that, that Misha Collins's yearly Gishwas event just had its last Gishwas event? Yes. Okay. Uh, I do. I... One of the stars is starting their own family business brewing company and it's going to take up a lot of his time and he's going to be back in Austin with his family. Therefore cutting his time in Toronto filming. But if your theory is correct, I know what the last season should be. Uh, I know exactly what the last season should be too. Sam and Dean wake up in a bed with Suzanne Plachette. (laughs) <laughs> every show needs to end the way that new heart ended. Cause that was the greatest ending ever. Obviously you, you, you tie up loose knots and all of that kind of stuff. You try to give everybody a good closing, but the last season is they are, they are tracking down an ancient evil, the biggest evil. Okay. And through the whole episode, they're tra- t- they're tracking it down to kill it. And at the final for the final episode, it turns out that that ancient evil that they have to destroy is the Simpsons. Nice, yeah, yeah, that's what they have to destroy. No, if the, if they are going to end because the so- Simpsons have been on so long, Jesus watched the Simpsons. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. Gonna die. Yeah, no, if if they're ending Supernatural, then it has to end uh, Guns Blazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the actors themselves have said they don't really see much of an ending to it, except all, Sam and Dean dying. Yeah. But, but, however, in season 13, there will be a, what is it called? Spin-off. Uh, it's a pilot. No, no, no. It's a pilot episode inside of the season. Oh yeah. For another yeah, a spin-off episode. Yeah, a spin-off, spin-off episode, episode. Whatever for for a TV show that the fandom has been gunning for. We have been calling it Wayward 
uh, wayward sisters, wayward daughters, wayward yeah. daughters. Because of Wayward Sons. We've been calling it Wayward Daughters for years. And they finally listened to us. And they're doing a spinoff or trying to call. Now they're, they're calling it Wayward Sisters. Okay. And it's going to star uh, Jody Mills as the, the main protagonist. And she's um, in care of Claire Novak, who is Castiel's vessel, Jimmy Novak's daughter. Yeah. And then I can't remember the other chick's name. She used to be a vampire, or she was a adopted by a vampire family, and they were trying to turn her into a vampire. But then, she, but Jody takes care of all these kids. That's but basically, but all the women, that, all all the women, yeah, they're finally empowering the women that they haven't fucking killed. That they haven't killed, yeah. <laughs> They they're empowering the women they haven't fucking killed, and and Jody and Donna. Donna is also a, a sheriff. Jody and Donna, yeah. and they're doing a spinoff, so it's not necessarily going to be the fact that jo- the Sam and Dean have to die. So I'm thinking they can just like in the series, and they can make occasional appearances on Wayward Sisters. Ah, uh-huh, yeah. okay. But if the, like the entire fandom, there are some people who hate that idea, but there are people who love that idea because we've been clamoring for it for years, but we would like to see an alternate take yeah. on other people's opinions of Sam and Dean Winchester, because right now you really only see it from Sam and, Sam and Dean's perspective. I'd like to see it from other people's perspective. Like, God, they're so full of themselves. Yeah. Especially Dean, like for real. Did you see him? Oh, and like, Oh, okay. Okay. So, so you're talking kind of like, Doing the whole season again, doing the whole series again with what's going on in the background. No, that would be awesome. Just having one of the girls like slipping clues into their backpacks and shit so they fucking get it. That's gonna happen. That would be awesome, though. Yeah. But just just seeing like seeing Sam and Dean from other people's perspective, and they're completely not even in the show except for the occasional cameo. Yeah, would be amazing. But it's all, again, it's not about them. It's about the women in the show they haven't fucking killed yeah. Yeah. to if, further the plot of the man. If they are going to end Supernatural, I would like to have an episode where uh, Sam and Dean die, but Felicia Day comes back to life. <gasps> and, then, and then she decides that she's pissed that she died, so she decides to build a, a uh, build a, like a secret base on the moon yes he traps people and forces them to watch bad movies boom yeah. oh there you go yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah well no, i'm kind of uh, i'm kind of thinking that like sam and dean is they're in the series through the whole thing but you only ever see the back of their heads so i'm picturing the the, the two girls a bit further back and like it would be like sam you know what this means yeah, Dean, I know what this means. And then you just see the two girls in the back roll their eyes and say in unison, Chupacabra. Oh, my God. You no. know? No, buddy. You sounded exactly. Okay, the episode that Steve was talking about when they went to the Supernatural convention in the show. Yeah. You sounded exactly like all of the fans in the Supernatural convention. <laughs> Nice. That was so good. Because, like, seriously, Sam and Dean are standing there, and he's like, Dean, do you know what this means? And he's like, yeah, I do. And I was like, you just, you you perfectly emulated that. That's great. And, oh. and I've only seen the first season a long time ago. <laughs> and you know what? The first season, they don't even sound like that. Yeah. I literally, Steve, you can ask Steve, when I went back to rewatch, I was like, wait a minute, is this dubbed? Is this, yeah. is this, this doesn't sound right. Yeah. They're they're so baby. They sound like little babies, and they're not all deep and groveling. Yeah, I fucking, keep making yeah, I keep making Batman jokes when you're yeah. watching Supernatural. Like they've been gargling whiskey and rocks. Yeah. Like what the fuck? Yeah. But when you go back to season one compared to like season twelve, you're just like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. You're yeah. this baby faced little twink who sounds like a child. Yeah, and then you, and then you get to 12, like yeah, and... season ten, and it's just Alfred. I need the Batmobile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that it's that proves the point though. Like even in season three or two or whatever season that was, 
they're still like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it sounds like this. I can't, yeah. I can't even. I guess I'm a, yeah. I don't have the right vocal yeah. words for that. <laughs> One of the things that I was really proud of in this episode when I was is I was basically talking about the fact that Misha Collins you have a good chance of banging that. Do I? Yeah. Yes. It just he he seems like a kinky enough guy that you got a chance. You know what? Don't meet your idols. Like he's inspired so much. No, I mean, I mean, like as much as I say, fuck, I want to do that, and like I totes my goats. Like him and his wife, I want to be besties with them. Oh, don't besties don't deal. tell me, don't tell me you don't want to pull a GI Joe out of his ass. No, no, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, like, I want to be their best friend. Yeah. But I mean, I would be banging both of them. Honestly, like I would tear them up. But Misha is. He's so. That's the thing is he's so genuinely good. It's yeah. fucking ridiculous, and it makes him want to smack him around. So I'm worried. Like I don't want to meet him. I don't want to bang him. Do you know why? Because that'll fuck up my perception of how amazing this person is. Because you know, I don't want him to be real. I want yeah. him to continue to be the amazing person he is. I want yeah. him to continue to be that inspiration in my life. The the person who's doing all these amazing things that makes me say, hey, you know what? I should start a nonprofit yeah. that's going to benefit the LGBT youth around the world, or well, America anyway. Yeah. You know, I don't want, but I'm just I could maybe possibly if it came down to it. And I had a, a chance, I probably wouldn't say no. Yeah. I'm not going to kick my bed, you know? <laughs> but you yeah. would have to make him beg a little. That's what you're saying. I mean, I just, I would, if it came down to one night in Misha Collins' bed or years of friendship, I would have to pick the years of friendship. Okay. I know that sounds crazy coming from somebody who is semi obsessed with Misha Collins. Yeah. But. It's true. I mean, he's he's amazing, and so is his wife. Oh my god! <laughs> god, Vicky, I'd be her best friend forever. Yeah, I do. You mean, no, I want to. You be... mean Vicky Tippins popping off Krushnik? Her name is actually Vicky Van Tuck, sir. Okay. Vicky Van Tuck. Vicky Van Tuck. I believe that is Kim Basinger's character in Tim Burton's Batman. Um, and I don't know if Steve told you this during what? the course of. The- but Vicky literally wrote the books, the book on threesome. I did. I yeah. mentioned that. Yeah. I mentioned, mentioned that? the threesome. Yeah. yeah, I mentioned it. Oh, I know. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, all the shit that Nisha has said in panels at conventions and just Twitter, even. Yeah, he's a kinky motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I can get behind yeah. that. Yeah. I can get behind that. I can get in front of that. I'll bend over for it. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's be for real, right? I understand where you're coming from. I'm the exact same way with Steve Buscemi. Fuck yeah, you yeah. are. Yeah. You see, Steve, every time Steve Buscemi comes on the TV, yeah. he's like salivating. That's why we don't watch Mr. Deeds anymore. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> I have a really hard time with the Reservoir Dogs. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah Reservoir Dog. Yeah. And um, um, that other one Reservoir Cats, the fe- all female Reservoir Dogs. Memories. Which, which, I don't know the words of that song. Okay, no, I'm I'm pissed off that you didn't come at me and ask me about Stonehenge Apocalypse. This was my movie. I suggested this Stonehenge, movie. where the demons dwell. Did Steve tell you that the the guy that was driving the the vehicle at the end was on Supernatural? No, like what vehicle? Okay, so remember when they're driving in the the like. What is it? That's not a jeep. A jeep. It's like an SUV. Yeah. And uh, Misha's holding. Uh, I'm sorry, <clears throat> Doctor Jacob Glasser. Glasser gives is, the ring. Is that the no, same? No, he's holding the the meter that detects the EMPs. EMPs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not uh, EM. What is it? Wait, hold on. And the guy says, oh, so we're just going to drive around? Until yeah, you... yeah, the driver. Yeah. He's also, he, he he's a demon in Supernatural. I mean, he's nice. not like a regular character. But I saw that yeah. guy, and because of my very random memory, 
totally random because usually I wouldn't remember this shit. Well, that's random. But I saw this guy and then I was like, he played a demon on Supernatural. Put some black eyes on that bitch. Yeah, he sure did. I looked him up. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, so he played demon. And I didn't even mention the ring. I totally like skipped. When I was doing my plot synopsis, I totally skipped the stupid fucking ring Oh, yeah, ring like part. the ring award thing that he got, and he yeah, handed it to the yeah. doctor chick, and she was like, oh! and he was like, relax, it's not a proposal. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, yes, thank God. There's no, like, and you know what, we were watching it out there with Christian Vienna, there's no sexual tones, overtones, undertones, side tones. Yeah, I will say that no. is refreshing. Yeah. To see. But do you know, like, they're gonna bang. She's she's like, yeah, I'm gonna accept this, and I'll hold it until you get back because she's thinking that she's gonna be able to bang her. I'm like, dude, there is no sexual tones at all in this fucking movie. Period. Yeah, you're just and you're, you're, just you're adding you're making, all of yeah, that. Yeah, like you're making it up. Yeah. Like it is so nice to watch a film that there's no romantic aspect yeah. at all. It's great. <laughs> I love that though. It's not a proposal. Growing up, I always thought that Donnie and Marie Osmond were dating. I didn't realize their brother and sister, and then he said, "Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, they're still dating." I, I don't believe that there's proof that there isn't that they aren't. Yeah. That's well, a good point. I mean, they're Mormons. Yeah. We just need to check their underwear situation, basically. Yeah. Okay. What what prompted you with the Donnie and Marie Osmond thing? Like, what was that? Because I was adding, I always added sexual tension to Tony and Marie Osmond is why. No, you didn't add it. They did. You just picked up on it. Okay, you just blew my mind, Tony. <laughs> Bunny, do you want to back me up on that? There was no sexual I think, tension. I think, I I think there may be some soundness to her hypothesis. I mean... You're not the only person in the world who thought Donnie and Marie Osmond were fucking, Steve. So you're okay. not the one adding the tension. Okay. Okay. Why did lightning come out of non-conductive rocks? Yeah, honey. Why did lightning come out of non-conductive rocks? It depends. What kind of rocks were they? Stonehenge. Stonehenge. <laughs> oh, we're talking. Oh, we're back. We're to the movie. About, yes, we're talking about the movie. <laughs> Sorry, Steve got me fucked up with Donnie and Marie Osmond. Um, the lightning because there was a mag, me, uh, an electromagnetic. Something in the middle of the, the, what is it called? The altar stone? The altar stone. So it wasn't lightning. It was electricity, sir. Get it right. Science, science, science. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Science, science, science. science. Right. Science, it was, science, it was science, electricity. Science, science, science. It was electricity. Ooh, lots okay. of science over here. Lightning. And the electricity was gathering the energy from the earth's core and all of the points, uh, the, which would be the, 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 what they call pyramids, the pyramids. Right. Okay. And then focusing them at Stonehenge and then pushing them outwards. So get it right, please. Okay. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like, I feel like. Why I are they passing it through? They had copper. Um, you don't know how long Stonehenge has been there, sir. <laughs> Maybe they didn't realize copper existed at that time. So okay, you they, use rock? <laughs> rock. All they had was mud and slaves. Mud and slaves. You know what they, they did? Had. They shoved a slave full of magnets and encased them in a rock and put them in the altar stone. Yeah, his name was Toby. Toby. <laughs> <laughs> his name was Toby. Okay, look, I can't I can't explain this movie to you. I just knew <laughs> it was a good movie for the podcast. It was All right, so let's podcast. talk. Since Steve has already, he he just kind of blew me off for this. <sighs> let's talk about this. Okay, hold but, on, hold on. If we're not wrapping up the show, then I gotta, I gotta, I need a break. Oh damn it! Okay, just hold I need on a, a second. Just gotta, <laughs> just gotta pee. Yeah, oh. so do I. Okay. So let's break. All right, we will be break. right back with more of the Pope on film after these commercial messages. <laughs> Do 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 New song. New song. This is a new song. Before the throne of the Almighty. Bob's heart. 
for today. Continuing our discussion of uh, Stonehenge Apocalypse with uh, Natasha. I actually wrote that. It, it no, was, no. It was like a bunch of A's. <laughs> Natasha. Oh, uh, yeah. No. I call you my, my better half. I actually, I call you my better and much bustier half. Well, <laughs> okay, neither of those things are untrue. However, do not call me Natasha. But Natasha, Kevin. no, you know what? No, one of my teachers tried to make that mistake. My chemistry yeah. teacher, Holt, Holt tried to make that mistake. Natasha, no. Oh, you don't like that? No, it's Natasha. Natasha. Okay, here, I'm still attached my phone. So we are still discussing Stonehenge Apocalypse. We are here with Deanna. Hi, Deanna. How are you hey, doing? Hey. Deanna, hey. disaster. <laughs> Deanna, Man, disaster. Yeah, oh, sorry. that was your she wrestling name back she, in the day. She retired from wrestling a long time ago. Yeah, she used <laughs> okay, to be a so wrestler. I'm gonna, I, now, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to start this from the beginning because Steve should have come out and talked to me about this. Oh, okay. really need- All right, let me look at Steve's notes here and see what kind of bullshit he has going on. Ooh. Good luck reading my. Uh, Handwriting. Uh, I've known you for 14 years. I'm pretty sure I can read the handwriting and interpret it correctly. Canada? Oh, okay. That's what it's made. Yeah, it was you made in Canada. <laughs> you already no, I thought we were already in the movie and he was actually setting the scene. Mm. It was made in Canada. Canada is the CW Canada. capital of the world. CW? Canada Winter? Didn't it happen in like Maine? <laughs> Or was it but does it mean Maine? it was filmed in Maine? Yeah, no. I'm sure yeah, was, yeah, no. The the, sure the, the hidden Stone temple, the Maine. hidden temple was in Maine, and uh, backstory: the hidden temple was actually created by an evil clown. All right, first of all, can we can we talk about the the black person at the beginning? Because Sexy caramel guy. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, okay, okay, Joseph. yeah. Let's talk about him. Let's talk about Joseph. Joseph. Excuse me. Him. He is called Sexy Caramel Guy in this podcast. I will call him by his given name, sir. Uh, his name is Sexy Caramel Joseph. Guy. Joseph was a nickname. That's not his 
given name. He's an actor. <laughs> in the show, <laughs> it was a fuck you. It Diana. was a movie. <laughs> movie. <laughs> Do you see this? Do you see how I'm treated, buddy? Mm-hmm. Fuck you. I, 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 I could swear I heard him referred to in the movie as sexy caramel guy. Yeah. <laughs> Misha Collins was all like, hey, sexy oh caramel God. guy. Okay, so and then the, sexy the caramel black, guy's all like, hey, black Misha. Doctor, because apparently using his name is not sufficient enough. Blockter. Joseph. Sure. <laughs> Blockter. Oh, my God. Joseph <laughs> appears at the beginning, right after we hear Misha Collins' rumbly voice telling us about the truth, yeah. and we see the, the robot head. I my meta group told me to just... Uh, occasionally say robot head and uh, fuck something else. I can't remember. Hold on. But after we see Joseph, um, we automatically know that he's going to die or he's the evil person in the film. Do you know why? Why? Because he's the black guy. Yeah, true. He's the black guy on screen. He's going to die. That's like a film classic. Yeah. You're black, you're gonna die. Except for that one shark film. Do you remember that one shark film? Sharknado? Was it Samuel L. Jackson that was in it? Oh, like it Deep in. Water or something like that. There you go. No, I think it was called Deep Blue. Deep Blue Sea. Deep Blue was I never Deep saw Blue that. Sea. I own it. It's I never saw that. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, and there's like the one black guy. Samuel L. Jackson died. Yeah, he, and he's like, and he gets cool eaten by a shark. Together, and then he's like, yeah. ah! And then the one black guy does live, and it was like amazing. <laughs> anyway, there are snakes out there this big. Snakes, <laughs> movie to this day. Yeah, yeah. Because That's one of the things that that uh, Bunny said he respected of Misha Collins is the fact that Misha Collins is like, oh no, this movie sucks. Oh yeah, no, Misha will be the first person to tell you how bad this movie is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah, will. Um, just like uh, what's the other movie he did that I told you about? Anyway, we're not talking about that. So uh, he's going to die because he's a black man and he's in a film. And then... <laughs> I, 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 I might point. have to challenge that term. Why? Film. <laughs> okay. A black in this made-for-TV movie. <laughs> um, just chime in with it's a robot head and electromagnetic is what they said. Yeah. And that, that would be sufficient enough. Anyways, so okay, and then you see the beginning of Stonehenge and the obnoxious British uh, tour guide. Mm-hmm. Was I not mistaken in seeing a black person <coughs> in the tour? I believe there was a black person in the tour. Yeah. Okay, here's where the film went absolutely I mentioned wrong. That. I mentioned that the yeah. first yeah. rumble of the ground. Even just even if it was just an earthquake and nothing else apocalyptic happened, the first rumble of the ground, that black person would have booked it the fuck out of there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I have black people in my life to know this. I, I, as a white person, know that white people are fucking idiots and they will stand there and say, oh, what is happening? No, black people are the fuck out. I'm, I am a black person at heart when it comes to this because I'd be like, nope, nope, I'm noping right the fuck out of this shit. Uh-huh. I'm going to die. Like, yeah. one of these stones is going to fall because the earth is quaking, and I'm going to die. It's going to fall on me. It's going to squish me. I'm leaving. Yeah. The logic of a black person. Meanwhile, the white people are like, let me film this. Right? <laughs> Be okay, great on so YouTube. that's where they... Stop touching my computer. I will rip your hand off. That's where they got this wrong. Okay? Well, I, I, I would run... I would run far enough away... So that when I turn around and film it, I can get all of the bodies dying. Like the awesome vaporization of the bodies? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, And the black person would have been gone far enough away to be able to do that had they realistically thought it through. <laughs> they have obviously ever filmed this film, this movie, didn't know a black person in their life. Well, they, they, didn't, didn't, they didn't know anything about science and magic either but it didn't stop them (laughs) well yes but you would think science and magic those are things you have to study if you know one black person you know those motherfuckers are gonna run (laughs) because they're smart they're like fuck that i'm out of here the ground 
America is shaking under my feet. I'm not sticking around to die. Black people have enough shit to worry about. Cops killing them and shit. <laughs> need a stone falling on them. Uh huh. They're gonna run. I'm being evaporated. Or be <laughs> evaporated. Yes, Vienna. Thank you. Okay, so they've got enough to worry about. They're they're gonna be gone. They got it wrong. And then <sighs> I don't understand why Misha Collins is like, oh, the kooks are calling tonight. And then the second call is like, no, they were they were honest. Like, there's military people here. Uh-huh. And then Misha's like, oh, well, I better check this out. Like, why do you why you got to be an asshole in the first caller? <laughs> you are literally running a fucking radio show. Where you are talking about a rainbow, rainbow, robot rainbow. head. Yeah. And you're going to dismiss somebody talking about Stonehenge. And like, why? A, and why couldn't we have? Thing. Why couldn't we have all of the lightning and people vaporizing and things like that before the military got there, where we could just really enjoy watching tourists die? You know what I'm saying? Sort of a podcast with that, like a video stream. Yeah. All the innocent motherfuckers walk in and just evaporate. (laughs) I mean, that would make a good light show. You know what I think would have been a more interesting movie? Any other movie? The story of the robot head. <laughs> you know, yeah. Can we talk about that? Because I, I so pointed much. that out to, to Deanna. I was like, Deanna, oh, she 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 mentioned it when we first started. She was like, "Hot the robot head," and I was like, yeah. "Oh no, that's important. It keeps coming up." Yeah, but I when told I you, I when I saw it, you said that that was important. Sorry. So I figured that that was when you said that it was important. I said, "Okay, this is going to be a major part of the plot," but no. It kind of is, though, because it's what discredited Misha Collins as a scientist. Or, I'm sorry, Dr. Jacob Glass. No, Misha Collins. Misha Collins. I call him Misha Collins throughout the plot synopsis. Because I can't call him Jacob Glass. No, it's Misha Collins and sexy caramel guys. Well, like, like what I was saying is, come on, you don't have to make up ridiculous conspiracy theories. Robot head. There are aliens on the dark side of the moon. That's an actual conspiracy theory. Use it. Like Lizard Misha people. says, though, people. he's in good company because how many scientists throughout the, the centuries have been called crazy? Yeah. Turned out to be true. Even after they even after death. So yeah, he was in good company. But no, why 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 the robot head? You could pick one that we already have existing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But no, that would have meant you had to have Googled something writer. Google something screenplay writer. Sci-fi we're talking about, though. Yeah. Um, I mean, and this is sci-fi after it turned into S-Y-F-Y. Yes, I noticed uh, that, too. So, yeah. So, like, they got even stupider. The way the it. kids spell it. Sweet, sweet, yeah, sweet, sweet. Uh-huh. Why did it have to be the head though? Could have been like an R. Where's the rest of the it robot? It was a nod to intelligence, Deanna. Where's the rest of the robot under the uh, a moon surface? The robot, like Sedonia. <laughs> the robot, Sedonia. Sedonia. That's the region on Mars. Sedona, Arizona. That's where all the red rocks are. Okay. They have a McDonald's with turquoise arches. <laughs> you tell me about that. That's yeah, it's the only McDonald's where the arches aren't golden. It's actually historic. That's true, it's true Deanna. It's true. Just like here in Oklahoma, we have a McDonald's that the arches, like it's a highway, something perceived. It's a giant McDonald's that actually goes over a freeway. Like you can, you you can, yeah. you can. Here in Oklahoma. Yeah, you park on one side of the McDonald's, and literally it goes over like a giant bridge over a freeway. It's really fucking bizarre. <laughs> I'm sorry. We were coming home from the city earlier, and I saw a uh, billboard for a McDonald's. Uh, this is off topic, but for a <laughs> we go off topic all the time. for a sausage uh, egg biscuit yeah thing, and I read it in my head as Sasuke and egg biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Ponyo loves Sasuke and Ed Biscuit. Okay, anyway. I've heard about that. So, <laughs> so Mr. Collins gets two phone calls. He does a quick search on the internet. And then he decides to fly out to... We, he, so first of all, we don't he know He poured keys. He, he poured keys, like we Harry Potter. Know, well, but we don't know where he is. Geographically, it never says. 
he starts out. That's a good point. I'm assuming it's America because he is friends with Joseph. And Joseph is in Maine at the time. But Who's Joseph? Joseph? Creamy Max black Sanchez. guy. Oh, sexy black caramel. Okay, gotcha. Oh, my God. Ugh. It's not my fault that he's hot, honey. I'm going to interject here for a second because I think the thing that bugged me the most was that if he's a true conspiracy theorist, he should have tabs on like news sites for stuff like this. Thank you. Yeah. Like Thank he you. should have known already. Yeah, he probably would have known. Like he, should, he would have been the first. He would have been asked. Well, I mean, instead he of being out, all dismissive was, and the shit. The thing is, is that he was like, "Oh, did you all pick up these electromagnetic pulses in Maine?" Like he picked that up, and he didn't understand. He didn't research it, or he, and he has that whole graph, like. From Does he not know where the black guy is too? Well, because I mean, he's they, like he's probably a, not totes besties like me and Vicky, but like you know they're friends. They talk occasionally, and they're both out uh, outlanders, outlayers, out out <laughs> outsiders, outlanders, outsiders. <laughs> they're the only outliers. Outliers. <laughs> they're no, they're outsiders. They're that's that's outsiders. why Misha's like at the end of the film. Stay gold, pony boy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! That bitch is a fucking cunt. Do you know that? She what are you goes talking after... about? Wait, what are we talking about? Now? Nothing. Never mind. Anyway, okay. I'm so confused. Outsiders. I was talking about who's the outsider. The outsiders? Yeah, who's the bitch in the outsiders? <laughs> cherry? He's There's cherry. only one girl in the outsiders. Essie <laughs> Hinton. Oh, okay. Essie oh, Hinton. Hinton. Okay. Hinton's Why? Is... A fucking cunt. Why? Uh, because she's a fucking bitch to her fans. Have you never? Anyways, I'm not going to get into this. <laughs> Supernatural fans and Essie Hinton. There's like an overlap there. and some of Supernatural them, fans and Essie Hinton fans? Really? She's a fan. Yes, Essie Hinton is a Supernatural fan. She okay. will not confirm or deny that she has written fan fiction. But she fully supports fan fiction for Supernatural. And she will tweet things about Supernatural. And she will tweet to and be tweeted at from so Supernatural. Yes. yes. From, from Supernatural Old. actors. So, like, there's a thing here, but Ew, there's I also a bunch drama. of discourse, and because I'm not into I'm drama, really, I don't really delve I into it, but yeah. I know it's there, and I know it exists, so I kind of avoid her. And Mark Pellegrino, I don't know his name, Mark Pellegrino, Sounds like your daughter's crying. Then take care of her. I'm done with my kids tonight. I'm done. Um. Anyways, he's an actor, and he's totally right wing, fucking Republican asshole. He he plays Lucifer on Supernatural, and like him and her are tight. Not the X file guy. No. Okay. Yes. No. She's you act her. like I know things outside of Supernatural. Come on, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, this is not what I was talking about. What uh, uh, they are, they are outcasts in this scientific community. Okay, the black scientist, yeah, stuff, and Misha Collins' character, Jacob Glasser, 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 Glasser. Glasser. Okay, Misha. they're both they're both outcasts. And you guys, what were they saying? They're outliers, outsiders, outlanders. <laughs> outlanders. That's as far as you got, and when you got on on it, S. E. Clinton. <laughs> I said, S. E. Clinton. Yeah, you said they were outsiders. They were rumblefish. They were that is then, this is now. What? What? Nothing. Fuck. It was a book joke. <laughs> now I can't remember what I was. Thinking. I think you were uh, describing the end of the film. No, Dave just wants to get this over with. Because, see, he made the mistake of not coming to me. And now he has to go over. Anyway. It's our it's our show. There's no over. Like, we can make it whatever length we no, want. No, but you're tired. I think you were talking. I'm always tired. I think you were talking That's true. about how I'm too. Um, they are, like, not accepted much in the scientific community. Uh-huh. Maybe uh-huh. along the lines of that. Uh-huh. That's why the oh, oh, we don't know where Misha Collins is. Yes. We don't know where Misha Collins is. Uh, and then he hears the second caller talk about it. And then he looks at a quick Google search. And then he flies to fucking Stonehenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in like a minute. And then he's like there. Which, yeah. by the way. And, and, and why does not everybody know about these ley lines 
when he can find it with a meter he got from Radio Shack. You know what I'm saying? You know? So, like, he's tracking these Okay, I can't hear you. I think you're talking too fast. I will slow down. <laughs> can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yes. Okay. Sorry, I have a tendency no, to... to good. Good. <laughs> I have a tendency to speak pretty fast when I get excited or... Yes. <clears throat> but yeah, so that, that, that irritates me because we don't know where he is. We're assuming he's in the United States, right? Yes. Or Canada. Or oh. Canada, but he's on the continent. Right? So he makes it to England. Is that where the the, the Stonehenge is? We looked it up earlier. Ireland. Close enough. It's in Ireland. Ireland? Bella says it's in Ireland. I say it's in England. Who says it's in France? That would still be Europe, though. I'll guess one dollar. It's in the UK. <laughs> UK. It's in the UK. See, I was right. Salisbury. 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 A- Amos. Salisbury, not Salisbury State. Amosbury, Salisbury. <laughs> it's Leviosa. Okay, so <laughs> this happens. Misha goes, he watches these people evaporate. Yep. Then he gets caught, and he was just like, what does he say? What is In his say? defense, he was trying to say, well, he said, top of the morning to Top you of the morning to you. That's stuck in my head, because I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do, I do, because you, you commented what? on it, Deanna. What? Yeah, Deanna commented on this, and I was just like, she'll remember. Yeah, top of the morning to you, fellows, <clears throat> or something like that. And then he just lets himself. Which I just caught. heard. Which I just heard recently. It might have been from you. Uh, top of the morning is actually noon. Was it from me? I I don't know from you or from Steve. I can't imagine where the hell else I would have heard this from. Say not from me. I don't but, know. It could have been from me, and if I was drinking, I might not remember. But it's but top of the morning is noon. Well, it may have been noon. We don't know what time it was. Maybe yeah. we should call. Him. Saying hi to these guys, but the thing is, he went through so much to not be caught, and then he's standing there and they're just like, "Hey!" and he's like, "Top of the morning to you." He could have ran. I mean, he wasn't a threat to them. Why would they use lethal force? They wouldn't like shoot him. Yeah. And, and if they're in the UK, the chance of them having lethal weapons to begin with is slim to none. Mm-hmm. Which shows you how American this film is, considering how many people have guns. Yes. And the American military being involved. Mm-hmm. So, that irritated me that Misha didn't try to run. When, clearly, I, dude, you're in the middle of fucking nowhere. You don't see the Jeep coming up. <laughs> you don't say, oh, there's a Jeep. I need to hide behind a stone, even. You don't run into any tourists? You don't see the fucking camera they put up on the stone? That's obviously not a part of Stonehenge, dude. How do you not see that? All the tourists piling up because they did not hear that Stonehenge was closed. You know it, buddy. Mm -hmm. I'm just, this movie is so bad. I love it so hard. I love this movie. Now, I kind of resent that you... Compared it to, uh, what was the movie? Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages. I kind of resent you for that. Because that's, fuck you, honey. <laughs> fuck you, you know how I feel about Rock of Ages. It is pure it's, 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 gibberish. Front to back. <laughs> nothing they said. Rock of Ages, so be it. They, they, I, nothing I, they said. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not discrediting that. But nothing that they said throughout the whole movie made any sense it didn't and you know that like the gigahertz yeah like that part i was and, and the british scientist didn't even cover his ears mm-hmm. i'm like dude there i don't care you you're obviously not human if you can't cover your ears and everybody else is yeah uh-huh. 
It just no. It's gonna show that he's either hardcore or evil. But he didn't turn out to be evil. Well, then he was hardcore. He turned out to be shot in the gut and then be able to run at full speed outdoor to That's warn Misha Collins about hardcore. the bad guy. And he yeah. says, and he says, they're terraforming. And she rolls her eyes and says, you're right. When do scientists not argue over shit? Okay, you know what? Here's the thing. Let's talk about these scientists, okay? So-called, I'm using air quotes, scientists, yes. okay? At the beginning, when the British asshole doctor comes on to Steen, he talks to the female. She tells him the information he needs to know. And then... All of a sudden, there's a male scientist. Let me refer to him. Yes. Did you notice that? How he was like, fuck you, chick. I'm going to give you the brush off, and I'm going to talk to this male. He has a penis. He obviously knows better than you. Yes. <laughs> I was so mad about that. I was like, okay, this asshole, he's got something to do with this plot. I don't know what, but he has something to do with this plot. And then that asshole turned out to be like, oh, no, you're going to stay back. I'm going to stay back, too. And then he was like, hey, so, you know, that guy, the black scientist, the one y'all don't want to talk about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a follower, and I'm going to shoot you in the gut and kill the chick scientist. And then I'm going to kill Jacob Glasser when he arrives, because I'm monologuing at the end. (laughs) Yeah, that was him. Like I knew and, from the and, start. And perfect contrast because that dude cannot get whiter. He could not. Seriously, no. he was wearing Bermuda shorts, bunny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and loafers, Bermuda shorts and loafers. Mm-hmm. He could not be whiter. And no. then the gun that he has is like a little pea shooter. I counted. He shot the guy, and he presumably shot the chick. Yeah. So that was two shots. And then when Misha shows up, he shot the guy, what, four more times? Yeah. So that'd be six shots. That would be about it for the gun, right? Unless he had more ammo? Yeah. And then at, when the he pursued Misha, he continued to shoot? I highly so, suspect that his girlfriend's name is Tammy. <laughs> what? That's how <laughs> white he is. I got it, Bunny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, but like that guy, he he totally gave the chick the brush off for the dude, and I I knew that 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 moment that dude was gonna come into play somehow. Yeah, in a really cool way, because this motherfucker could have just got up and shot both of them. He bowed too when he hit the gun. He did bow, yeah. And that stance when he was like, "I'm gonna shoot Misha Collins" when he shows up, and he's standing there. I was like, Dia, look at how awkward that pose is. And she was like, no, he's a voguing. <laughs> he's a pose. He was like a Vogue pose. Yeah. <laughs> but, ugh. fuck that guy. Right? Am I right? Yes. And he led them to, that's the thing is, like, he led them all to believe everything he believed, almost everything that he believed. Yeah. Scientifically. He showed them exactly what was happening. He knew what was happening. Mm-hmm. But yet nobody took that into account. He, he but knew, he, but, but at the same time, he knew exactly what was happening when he got there. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, he knew what was happening. They needed a man on the ground, and he was the man on the ground. Yeah. But nobody else knew what was happening, and he wasn't going to just be like, oh, wait, hey, guys, let me tell you what's happening. Because this, this like, oh, theory yeah. that we have, you know, he's not going to say that. Yeah. Because he, he wants this to happen. His prophet, uh, Joseph, uh-huh. the, the, what did you call him? Since I'm trying to keep it consistent here. Sexy caramel chocolate guy. Sexy caramel chocolate guy. His prophet, Joseph. Um. I told him this was going to happen. So he was on ground zero, basically. Yeah. And he can't he, he give it away because he wants it to happen. But he doesn't, he has to play the role. Yeah. 
So he, I'm going to play role of scientist. Here, let me show you these oh. these things in the soil we found. Oh, and let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Oh, hey, British doctor with a fucking oh. stick up his ass. Let me show you these papers that Jacob Glasser has. Uh-huh. I just, I don't like this guy. <laughs> That's my- so Jacob kills Joseph. I'm sure there's some sort of biblical reference in there somewhere, but I haven't read the Bible because who fucking yeah. cares? But um, what irritated me was the the as much as I I, I love Misha, yeah, there was like a black versus white thing going on there. Do you yeah. know? I mean, I, think I don't so. want to. And I also and I, and I also do believe in your biblical reference theory, um. Because it would be because the same writers are writing it, and they'll be like, "Isn't there a story about Jacob and Joseph fighting?" Yeah, okay, let's go with that, and 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 don't stop to Google. Exactly, like I think that there was supposed to be some sort of biblical reference. I mean, the world's ending for Christ's sake. Yeah. Christ's sake, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a, there has to be some biblical reference to it, and they just didn't care enough to read the Bible no. to find out. Because it's sci-fi. Why? They make Sharknado for fuck's sake. They don't care. Yeah, somebody wrote this in the bathroom. Yeah, no, they were taking a shit and they were like shitting out a script at the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they don't they don't give a fuck. And and then they were like, hey, let's script this uh Joseph character as a black guy, and let's script this Jacob character as a white guy. And it inadvertently turned out to be like a black versus white thing. <laughs> Black is bad, white is good, and I mean you can you can infer some. I'm 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 in meta mode. I'm sorry, but you can infer so much from that. Oh, if you really- I know, I know who the writer is, and we may have to research this and uncover it. Who? Who? The, the Google AI. The Google <laughs> I, the Google AI that's been putting out those motivational memes. <laughs> All right, hey, okay. hey. That's who what? wrote this movie. I'm not leaving. Christian and I are going to get going. No, but before not. we do, I just want to mention one thing, yeah. which is that toward the end, there was this like statue of a circle with an X in it, and that was totally the X Men symbol. Yeah. Okay, you mean the the apparatus they needed to shut down the Stonehenge? The, 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 the golden, the golden ancient microfiche reel. The one that raised the the main the pyramid Listen, in Maine. I tuned out a little towards the end. Okay, Do you know what everybody the did. Was? Don't worry. I've watched this movie three fucking times because I kept tuning out. Oh my god! See, I paid attention to every detail. <laughs> bad movies, okay? Like, like I see Have a bad you ever movie. Seen Killer I, I only want to watch it one time. <laughs> <laughs> like I pay attention. I pay attention so I don't have to watch it again. Listen, the bad thing about that is that you commit this shit to memory and and he was right. It was the X Men symbol. Yeah. Like he's like this apparatus. I've seen it somewhere before. Yeah. You've seen it in X Men comics, dude. Like get over it. Everybody's seen it. But no, it's apparently in some museum and they just they're just like, Oh yeah, sure it's here. And without government clearance, they let him take it. I think I think that this would have been a much better movie. If they replaced Misha Collins with a with a Scottish Bigfoot, you know, I be like, look, there. let me tell you all about this. I was here when it was built. Scottish Bigfoot. Scottish Bigfoot. Scottish Bigfoot. Okay, Scottish Bigfoot. Bigfoot. <laughs> What was the other thing I brought up? And you you made a squiggly note on your thing here. Hold on, I don't know if see notes here. I made a. There's squiggly. a lot of squiggly notes because that's. No, Scottish I... Scottish Bigfoot is like regular Bigfoot, but he rolls his R's. I made a comment about something, and Steve was like, "Oh, let me make a squiggly note." I'm not writing that down. But here it is. I don't care anyway. Oh, that's that's the person who ends up being the rat at the end. Oh yeah, okay. 
And it's like, yeah, I don't care at this point who the red is. I don't even know who that Yeah, was. okay. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. So Misha calls the shot in the calf and then apparently realistically is still able to run to the Stonehenge really altar stone. Yes. F the calf. I don't think you can do that. Scientifically speaking. Biologically speaking. <laughs> but you know, whatever. Which, which one you coming through one? you coming through blurry again? Um, I'm, I'm talking about Mishkan being shot in the calf. Oh, shot shot in the calf. Yeah. Yeah, he's shot in the calf and then still runs to the altar stone? Oh, yeah, no fucking way. Like, that's... I, I'm pretty sure that's biologically impossible. Yeah. And then the guy was like, hey, I lost my uh, navigation. I'm just gonna go ahead and go in blind and drop this bomb. Yeah. I think it might land on Stonehenge. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and then Misha sees the bomb. Like, do you have super sight? Because mm-hmm. he sees it, of course. And then he obviously has to mention the fucking robot head. Because mm-hmm. the bad guy is monologuing again. Yeah. Obviously. Because bad guys have to monologue. You've got, I say that. You got me monologuing. I said that. And, and then Misha was a robot head and slams his hand down on the fucking uh, altar stone. And then oh big head. light. And we assume Misha Collins is dead. And why the nuclear bomb? Why the nuclear bomb? It's Stonehenge. A couple of bulldozers would have done that job. Honestly, yeah, like, can we send a fleet of bulldozers out? Yeah, well, not only that, like, apparently, it is is attracted. Well, now the Jeep it, it did malfunction because of the electromagnetic pulses, buddy. Yes. We got all time and that's why Misha had to fire. run. So, the, the bulldozers would not be able to be in any way electronic, yeah. So somehow, but you could just like knock him over. Oh, uh, you know what? Gypsy danger analog. Yes. Who says danger analog? Yeah. I mean, yeah. how uh, Eleanor just got a hold of the podcast notes because That's she is attracted she to podcast Our notes. Podcast notes. Call back Good to night. previous episodes. She she really Why loves those. Love notes so much. You ready? Uh, okay, so. He's dead. Right? I, I, I I just remember Julie Landers, so I know a couple of things about electromagnetic pulses. Okay. Bunny is our electric magnetic pulse expert. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. As long as Selma Hayek is around, electromagnetic pulses exist. Do you agree, Diana? Diana agrees. Yeah. Diana agrees. We all agree with that. But uh, here's the thing, Supernatural fans, or one Supernatural fan that I talked to about this, tied this in. They said that this, this he's not dead. He's resting. No, no, no. He's pining for the fields. <laughs> he's not dead. He's an angel. Is he an angel? Is he an angel? Is that what they said? Well, yeah, on Supernatural, he's no. an angel. No, okay, look. No, what we are talking about is something that I can't tell you because they would be spoilers for you, Deanna, because you haven't gotten to those seasons, Deanna. <laughs> I'll come at you, bro. Fight me right now. I'll fight you. <laughs> but there's a season where something happens and Emmanuel is there Get and they're it. like, oh, it's oh. when Emmanuel is there and the then he's dead and then just oh. yeah. yeah. I'm going to pass you off to Steve now. I've okay. lost my train of thought. Deanna has fucked me up. Fuck you, Deanna. <laughs> been fun. It has been fun. That, that was pretty epic, honey. That was pretty Epic amazing. Or a shit show. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> you know what? Uh, bit of good, bit of bad, bit of both. It was no, it was a shit tomato, show. Tomato, tomato in our world. <laughs> Should have just uh, let you wrap no, up. That was, no, that was good. That was that was the end of Guardian. No, that uh, was good. Uh, something good, something bad, bit of both. Mm-hmm. Bit of both.
bit of both. That's great. But that it was a little great. seltzer down enough. your pants. That was great. That was amazing. <laughs> that, was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. That was amazing. That was amazing. So I have three ideas for the next episode of the podcast. Yes. I'm, I'm not going to be building this up. I'm just going to rip it off like a Band-Aid. Number one, the first Iron Man movie. It's on Amazon Prime. Number two, Tom Cruise is the mummy. Eventually, we're going to have to do this piece of shit. And it's yeah. it's, it's our cloud. So uh, number two, the mummy. And number three, the scariest movie of all time, the documentary Jesus Camp. Those are the three ideas for next week. Oh, let's do it's Jesus up. Camp because I've been wanting to do Jesus Camp for a while. Yeah, we've been wanting to do Jesus Camp for quite a while. Yeah. Who has Jesus so, Camp? Is it still on Netflix? It's on Netflix. Okay. Let's do Jesus Camp. God damn it. All right, we're doing Jesus Camp. Oh. So next week, Flight of the Concords, a Texas Odyssey, and next week, the scariest movie of all time, the documentary Jesus Camp, otherwise known as Isabella's favorite movie. <laughs> Bella, it's okay. It's okay. And while we're on the subject, let me let me bring up Harry Potter. Thank you. <laughs> Warlocks are enemies of God. Oh, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. It's yes. gonna be good to see how many times we can make Bella say "screw you." <laughs> It's been a while since we've done an episode this long, so that's yes, good. That's good. You know, it's old school, yeah. honey. It's it, it's. I love it when you're on the show. You 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 took over, and that's great. It it, it was an amazing episode. You know what? Yeah. No, this has been a damn good episode. This has been a damn good episode. This has been a damn good episode. I'm good. Yes. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you douche waffles. Be careful and touching my taco. <laughs> and we did it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, because Maxwell's always like passed out after the six hour long episode. Do 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 seven chapters a picture and actors that don't sit. Okay, I have no idea what you're talking about, but okay. Do 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 cut and print. Seven pages. Cut and print.